A state school administrator says that the standard deviation of test scores for 8th grade students who took a U.S. history assessment test is less than 30 points. As an independent investigator, you are asked to test this claim. You randomly select 18 tests and find that the students have a standard deviation of 33.6 points. At alpha equals 0 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the administrator's claim? Assume the population is normally distributed. Well, since we're dealing with a standard deviation here, and let's just go ahead and underline that, we can also determine the value or test the claim using variance because after all variance is simply standard deviation squared. That means that I can use a chi-square test. In order to do that I need to first determine if this is a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. And if it's a one-tailed test, I need to determine if it's a left-tailed test or a right-tailed test. And we're going to start that by looking at what the claim is. Now, the claim is that the standard deviation right here is less than 30 points. So that is the claim. And that's going to be sigma is less than 30. Now remember that when you're determining the hypotheses, the null and the alternative, you want to make sure that the null hypothesis has a statement of equality in it. The alternative hypothesis will be a statement of inequality. And if you look at this, this is a statement of inequality, so this will be my alternative okay. hypothesis. So let's go ahead and write that out. We're going to have the null hypothesis, h sub 0. And that's going to be the fact that sigma, our standard deviation, is greater than or equal to 30. And the alternative hypothesis will be sigma is less than 30. Remembering that this is the claim. And this is what I need to discuss. Next, I need to look at this and understand some other information. We randomly select 18 tests, which means that n our sample size will be equal to 18. We also find that the standard deviation for this sample, which will be a little less, will be equal to 33.6 points. Now, the level of significance, alpha, is 0.01. Now that I have all this, I need to go ahead and I need to find the critical values for this particular problem. The critical value, and since there's, this is a left tail test, there will only be one critical value, will be found using the chi-square distribution table. Alright, this is a sample from the chi-square distribution table and we need to go ahead and find our critical value. The critical value will be in the body of the table and we're going to find it first by understanding what the degrees of freedom is and in this particular case degrees of freedom d dot f is equal to n minus 1 which will be equal to 18 minus 1 which will be equal to 17. So our degrees of freedom will be in this row and now we need to consider alpha. Since this is a left tailed test, we'll need to have 1 minus alpha, which in this case will be 1 minus 0 0.01, which will be equal to 0 0.99. And so we find the 0 0.99 in this row, and we're going to find the intersection of the degrees of freedom row and the level of significance column, which in this case will be 6.408. So our critical value, chi squared, is equal to 6.408. Now, I'm just going to rough out a chi square graph. And it doesn't look exactly like a normal distribution graph, but this is what it does look like. And since it, this is a left-tailed test, we're going to look 
at chi-square being here and this is with this region being shaded in and that's going to be my 1 minus alpha and we note as I said the chi-square value is 6.408 so if the calculated test statistic falls in that shaded region in other words it's less than 6.408 then we can reject the null hypothesis and we note that there is enough evidence at the 1% level to support the state school administrators claim however if the calculated statistic does not fall within that region we do not or we will fail to reject the null hypothesis and there will not be enough evidence to reject the school administrators or I should say support the school administrators claim so let's go ahead alright now what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the chi-square for this particular problem and then we're gonna talk about using a p-value so remember that the claim is sigma is less than 30 we have n equals 18 our standard deviation for the population is 30 the standard deviation for the sample is 33.6 and we're going to use the following formula to calculate the chi-square formula for calculating the test statistic is equal to the following it is n minus 1 where n is the number in the sample space times the standard deviation of the sample space squared or you can call that the variance of the sample divided by the standard deviation of the population squared or we can call that the variance of the population so let's go ahead and rewrite this so that we can see what we're looking at remember that n is equal to 18 remember that sigma was equal to 30 and that little s is equal to 33.6 so therefore chi square will be equal to 18 minus 1 times 33.6 quantity squared divided by 30 squared and this will be equal to 21.3248 now let's compare this value to the critical value that we got from the table and we see that 6.408 is smaller than the calculated value and this 21.3248 is going to fall somewhere up in here which means that this does not fall in the rejection region therefore there is not enough evidence at the one percent level of significance to support the state school administrators claim because we are failing to reject the null hypothesis so we fail to reject and that means as I was saying there is not enough evidence to support the administrators claim that the standard deviation of test scores is less than 30 now we can also do this by calculating a p-value and we're going to use technology most specifically StatCrunch to calculate the p-value and once we do that we'll be able to determine whether we want to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis now you should get the exact same answer whether you use the chi-square value or you use the p-value 
the p-value is going to be compared to the level of significance. So when we go to do this, we're going to have to use the same values when using the p-value. So let's use StatCrunch. Once again, we'll need to remember that n is equal to 18. Little s is equal to 33.6. And sigma is equal to 30. Now, in order to get to StatCrunch, you have to go to StatCrunch.com or use the link inside of my StatLab. Once you're in StatCrunch, it's going to look like this and there are a number of options that we can use but we're going to go to stat we'll left click that we're going to be going to variance stats because we are dealing with either standard deviation or variance here and then we'll highlight one sample and then with summary left click that and it brings up another pop-up window you need to type in the sample variance, but remember the sample variance is simply the sample standard deviation squared. So if we square the sample variant, I mean the sample standard deviation of 33.6, we'll get the following 1128.96. So let me just go ahead and indicate that here. We want to find little s squared which will be equal to 1128.96. This is the variance for the sample. We're also going to need to square the standard deviation of the population to get 900 and this is the variance for the population. This is the value we will use in the hypotheses. Now once we do this we'll plug in the sample size we've already got the sample variation remember the sample size for this problem was 18 and then we're going to go to the hypothesis test and we're going to use the population variance of 900 and remember that this alternate hypothesis is going to be less than and then I simply left click compute and you'll notice this screen here this right here is going to give me a p-value of 0.7879 but it also gives me the chi-square statistic which is what I just calculated so we'll go ahead and copy that so that we can look at it inside the note so remember that for this problem the level of significance was an alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Now, when we look at this, if this value, the p, is less than this, then we can reject the null. But since the p value, 0 0.7879, is greater than the level of significance of 0 0.01, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. and we end up with the exact same answer. Now notice that as I was stating you can use this to go ahead and find a chi-square statistic if you want to also.